Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, it's great to see you all again. Uh, here I am again with John Coleman, my partner, and our best friendly philosopher, Bill Jordan. Hey, Bill, we're, uh, we're friends on Facebook, and I love all your posts, philosophical mm -hmm. posts and stuff. But I saw one recently, uh, a picture of you and a little kid, uh, kind of a throwback, uh, uh, what do they call them, My Memory Monday or something like that. For everything, yeah. There's way yeah, back. And, and, way and, back but it was you doing a radiothon, a charity radiothon for Duke Children's Hospital. And yeah. you did that for, what, 20 years or so, I guess, right? 20 or 21. I've kind of yeah. lost track. Yeah. Most important thing, most impactful thing. I was ever involved in professional. Really? Without a doubt. Life changing events, yes. Yeah. Um, we were, uh, this got launched, gosh, back in the 90s. We, uh, our general manager at the time, well, a, a guy involved in our company, Capital Broadcasting, we used to own numerous radio stations, and one of them was up in Baltimore. He was the general manager of the property up in Baltimore, and his son was born at Johns Hopkins with spina bifida. Oh. And so he hatched this idea of raising money for Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, and their guys were staying on the air. Well, I didn't know any of this. So I'm at an event for another charity event, like a golf and tennis weekend that Duke Children's Hospital would put it on. It was called the Duke Children's Classic. And I just loved being a part of that because it was golf and it was just, I mean, it was just a great weekend to get together with people and you raise money by, you know, admission and stuff like that. And so this doctor comes up to me and he says, Hey, you know, he says, you know, your, your sister station up in Baltimore is doing a radiothon for Johns Hopkins. Uh, the morning show is going to stay on the air for 106 and a half hours. Their frequency was 106.5. Right. And he says, and next year, you guys are going to stay on the air for 101 and a half hours because we were mix 101.5. And I said, we are? No, I, <laughs> I said, 101 and a half hours, 101.5 hours? He says, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, I guiltily admit to you that my first thought was, I wish we were mix 10. <laughs> you know, is, I mean, a long time to stay on the air. Now, we didn't do like all nights, but we would stay on till like 1 a.m. And we were back on the air at 5 a.m. in those early years. And it went for five days. Wow. First year, the first year in five days, we raised $125,000 and thought that was just tremendous. It is. The next year, we went to 230. Then it was like 320. Then it was 412. Then it was 530. And it just wow. kept growing. We got some corporate sponsors along the way, and it got to be where, I mean, it was over a million bucks. And we wow. also dropped it. We also dropped it to two or three days, still raising the same amount of money. But Bill, because uh, Bill, was there. We, we had educated the listeners into what to expect. So rather for them to, because at the end of it, the last hour or two, just the phones melt. That's wonderful. So you, you know, you did this. You did this uh, on radio. So was there a televised component as well, or? Was it just yeah, the radio? On the, weekend, on the weekend, there was a televised uh, component, and then we would always give the last check on, say, Sunday evening. And we were the biggest check by far that they would, would bring in. But the, the main thing was becoming something, becoming part of something bigger than yourself. Yes. yes. Which I highly recommend to anybody. And yeah. if you need a dose of perspective, as we all do from time to time, when we think we're bogged down with our troubles, and granted, there are important things going on in our lives, but if you will take 20, 30 minutes to just take a walk through a children's hospital, a VA hospital, any hospital, you'll get a healthy dose of perspective very quickly. But we just fell in love with these kids. We've lost some. Others have made it, and they're thriving. Became, we've become lifelong friends with some of the parents, some of the parents whose kids are still around some of the parents whose kids have passed. Yeah. Uh, miracles happen every day at Duke Children's Hospital, as at every hospital. But for us, it was just a true labor of love. And as I say, the most impactful thing professionally I've ever had anything to do with. I would not trade any of those long hours or the effort. And I just became 
uh, I mean, I just became possessed with when we started to try to raise the money. Um, I, I <laughs> we just we just took it through the roof, and we became. Uh, it's not just about me. I mean, we had a tremendous team. We became the number one per capita radiothon on the planet. Given wow, our size, Raleigh Durham area, we raised more money per capita than. New York, Chicago, Minneapolis, all these other cities, um, tremendously successful were Dick Children's. You know, I think it's yeah. really important that, uh, uh, I'm glad you guys brought this up, uh, the longest sustained uh, charity that, uh, uh, of a similar nature that uh, uh, I, I was involved in was uh, the Marine Corps Toys for Tots program. And even when I was out of the Corps, uh, every year I would find a, a bin someplace and provide a toy. Uh, toy and in fact I had a, a reunion of a Christmas story cast and crew and we did that with Marine Corps and and collected 1600 toys on a one night performance so yeah uh, those, toys but, but the important thing is that even if even if you don't have any connection with anything I have a, a, a cousin who he and his wife every Thanksgiving are always providing food to uh, needy families and they right. did that for dozens of years uh, but whether it's that or whether it's just collecting uh, stuff for kids or stuff like that, uh, there's always something that you can do, even if it's only once a year. Uh, but uh, your story is truly inspiring because. Well, uh, you know, that, that was it. We did work with Toys for Tots as well. And, and also to share this with you, as you sp speak of Christmas, uh, <clears throat> one year in particular, I remember we did a kind of a benefit thing for the Boys and Girls Club of Raleigh mostly inner city kids. And we went out to the event and Santa was there, but we had a meal for them and we gave them gifts. And, you know, I don't remember whether the kids had said what they wanted and we tried to fulfill that need or not of the organization. And there was one young lady and there's a picture I've got of her and I can't, Makela, Makila, something like that. Uh, anyway, I'm posed with her and she's holding her a gift she started crying when she got her present before she even opened it. And we're all like, you know, what's going on? She's crying. Why are you crying? And she had gotten gifts before, of course. But this was the first gift. And this was a young lady. I'm going to say 11 or 12 years old, maybe. This was the first gift in her life where her name was on the present. Oh. Wow. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. And then that night after all the kids had gotten their gifts and stuff, um, they assembled in front of the tree and Santa was there. But they all sang just in kids' voices, a cappella, Silent Night. I'm getting yeah. cheap now just telling you about it. So, you know, it, it's an old kind of a saying. If you're ever feeling down or feeling discouraged about yourself, encourage others. And you will you will benefit from it. You think you're helping them. And you'll be surprised at how much they are helping you. Well, yeah. I, th I think at this point, uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to raise my uh, cup to embrace the Bill Jordan. Well, embrace the boom. Again, this is kind of for my baby boomer friends. If you were born between, what, 1950, uh, excuse me, 1946 and 1964, you're by definition a, a baby boomer. And I think society, to a large extent, has kind of written us off. And I think we still <laughs> better in many, many ways. So live your life. Forget your age, embrace the boom. That's the idea. Amen, Bill. And um, give to charity. Give yourself. Give your yeah. time. Exactly. To charity. You will, you will get back source. far more than you give. I assure you. Thank you, Bill. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.